Book of Lika, son of Jehovah, known in heaven as the dawn of Bon, and on earth as the cycle of Moses, Kapilia and Chine. Jehovah said, I gave unto the earth a time of full earthhood, and, that the generations of men might know the period thereof, behold, I caused man to build a pyramid in the middle of the world. For it was my mark, that, from that time henceforth, man should turn from stone temples, and the hope of everlasting flesh life, to rejoice in spiritual abodes in my Aetherian heavens. And I brought the earth out of darkness and encompassed it around with the dawn of Bon. Chapter 1. 1. In the far-off Aetherian worlds spake the voice of Jehovah, saying, Lika, Lika, my son. Behold the red star, the earth. She cometh thy way, she mergeth dark and soiled from the forests of Ji, in the swamps of Bonassa. She will cross thy Aetherian fields, the Takaspi, and Opal, and Wedohine, dripping with the odor and dross of the Ji and swamps. Go thou to her, and wash clean her soil and her atmosphere in heavens. 2. Lika said, Alas, O Jehovah, how they have forgotten thee. 3. I will go to the red star, the earth, O Father. I will deliver her into purity and faith. Thy chosen shall be delivered from bondage, thy God made triumphant on earth and in her heavens. 4. Lika called to his high council, in his Aetherian kingdom, Vedapuisa, in the plains of Pioya, off the road of Artogonasses, at the high ark of Bon, made light by the holy angels of tens of thousands of years, and he said. 5. Behold, the red star, the earth, the voice of Jehovah came to me, saying, Go thou to her, O my son, and wash clean her soil and her atmosphere and heavens. And I said, I will go, O father. I will deliver her into purity and faith. 6. Lika said, Five hundred million Aetherian hosts will I take with me. For five years and forty days will I and my hosts sojourn on the red star and in her heavens. Her true God shall be restored and delivered in my name by Jehovah's hand. According to the rank of harvest of the gardens of Honyon, so shall my marshals choose and record my hosts. 7. Then spake the council, the historians of the Aetherian libraries of the Vorkman Road, where hath travelled the earth for tens of thousands of years. And they detailed the affairs of the earth for many cycles past, made plain before the gods assembled all the doings of the earth and her heavens. 8. Then Lika sent swift messengers off to the earth and her heavens, in arrow ships of fire they sped forth, twenty thousand, well skilled in coursing the Aetherian heavens and penetrating the atmosphere and vortices of travelling stars. To obtain the details of her god and her false gods, her lords and false lords, her harders and her hells, to scan her libraries and hastily return to Vedapuisa, to lay the matters before the High Council and Lika, the Navanian chief on Jehovah's throne. 9. Lika was sprung from the corporeal star Atos, which traversed the roads, Yadas Kuwen, of the south circuit of Thes, the vortex of another far-off sun, and was raised to Etheria in the cycle of Sai Ka, 125,000 years, by Methya, goddess of Ori Iyi, afterward chieftainess of Yuna Gamaya. 10. And Lika rose to be god of Avalasark 4,000 years, god of Kemmer, 6,000 years, inspector of Judas Aetherian roads at the Aegean swamps of Henneset, 15,000 years, surveyor of Ewald, 2,000 years, surveyor of the Watcher excursion, 4,000 years, recorder of Hitsamat, 8,000 years, deliverer of Habian vortices, 26,000 years, measurer of densities in Ablank, 1,000 years, recorder of the Rashadirvi, 2,000 years, god of the home plains of Steverized, 12,000 years, and chief of Vedapuisa, 25,000 years. 11. Lika had for his high council 30,000 chieftains and chieftainesses, of grades of more than a hundred thousand years in the Aetherian worlds, 500,000 of the rank of inspectors, seven millions of the rank of gods and goddesses, and of the rank of lords and lordesses, more than half a thousand million. 12. Of the Rapon hosts there were seven chiefs and nine chieftainesses, who were Lika's private companions. First, Rebsad, chief of Sotisav, 40,000 years, Sufrister of Shelives, 60,000 years, Marshal of Zaliaxi, 20,000 years, Master of Bassayan, 70,000 years, and he passed 20,000 years on the journey of Luswa Tavraginia, besides thousands of other journeys of less duration. 13. Next to Rebsad was Yanadai, chieftainess of Yur, 70,000 years, chieftainess of the roads of Salatamya, 70,000 years, marshalless of Pedanasa, 40,000 years, goddess of the Gan forest of Lulu Wogar, 65,000 years, besides goddess of Mor, goddess of Chichigenesma, goddess of El, and of Ramba, and of Z. 14. Next to Yanadai was Thazad, goddess of Zoloth, Matruzets of Yithkad, chieftainess of Hagu, chieftainess of Dabar, and of Hachol, and of the roads of Oliaskivadher, besides goddess of more than 100 Aetherian worlds. 15. Then came Thoso, chief of Kasara and Dasimats, 90,000 years, god of Saxix, 7,000 years, god of Chenesa, god of Hoxora, god of Fiban, god of Hotab, each 6,000 years, surveyor of the Limnian roads, 12,000 years, marker of meteors, 2,000 years, fireman of Thostis on the Ibian excursion, 30,000 years. 16. 
Next to Thoso came Miente, chieftainess of Gaul and Sanitus, in whose dominions the star T. Lemos was usated. When Gailu opened the road of Enshi Ustus for the Nazagi vortices of Mesic, chieftainess of Lamgu and Kud, goddess of Itsi, goddess of Asham and of the Baxgore Wing, goddess of the Duke Swamps, and lordess of Sus and Havre, in all 107,000 years. 17. Chama Ju stood next, she was chieftainess of Or Ad and Tu and Okadad, goddess of Asthi, and Hid, and Shogus, and Jagri, surveyor of Arvart and the Vaduan roads, surveyor of Ankhas, surveyor of the Han Mountains in the Aetherian Uuj of Dre Li, in all 260,000 years. 18. Next stood Murdana, chieftainess of Dahup and Hendi, chieftainess of Hapa and Hirish, surveyor of Sefer and Dhaka, inspector of Anachu, and Zaydan, and Edai, and Metisha, and Roth, in all 90,000 years. 19. Oshaw stood next, chief of Outsea and of Yotek, and of Samoan, and of Yadoha, maker of the Bridge of Wisaiti, marshal of the Honlagwoth expedition, and, besides these places, god of seven Aetherian worlds, in all 112,000 years. 20. Next came Yehoha, chief of Shung Hao and Agon, chief of Neo Sin, god of Izia, and Kaun, and Aso, and Una, and Yakho, and Agun. He was also the builder of the Raxan Aetherian arches, in all 90,000 years. 21. Hizan was next, chief of the Kiona's Belt, where Yagatar, the Orient chief, walled the plains of Magar, the Nevanian home of the delivered hells of Mina half a million years before. Hizmi was here nicknamed Creator of Wit, because of establishing his chieftaincy on the ruins of Hell. He was also chief of Mamza and Jawap, god of Gar, and Adara, the region of fountain flowers, in all 90,000 years. 22. Bowen was next, chief of Apaha, formerly the farms of Lung Wan and Sreed, chief of Vardua, and of the valleys of Naskam, where a million years before the chief of Chaksa disrupted the atmosphere in Sakri, and liberated from its 4,000 hells more than 30,000 million angel slaves in chaos. Bowen had also served as god of Amman, and Havit, and Shedo, and Piven, and as measurer of Pracha, and Ziri, and Asthus, surveyor of Ulam, and Shom, and Chosa and Zadok, in all 80,000 years. 23. Guan Gu was next, she was chieftainess of Andol, the place of the one-time apex of the Carrigan Vortex, whereat was formed the Star Ogitas and sent on its course by a Klongin, Orion Hemmer of Sheguizar. This vortex, when first formed by a Klongin, was 300,000 million miles long and was cometary 30,000 years in a Klongin's hands. Guan Gu was also chieftainess of Arsatar and Wagon, goddess of Anoa, and of Haugil, and of Zahave, in all 190,000 years. 24. Gihugan was next, chieftainess of Sumatri in the by roads of Yotagus, chieftainess of the four Aetherian worlds, Yoni, O, Theum, and Wachwakags, surveyor of Unshan, Zarihi, and Kintari, inspectress of Sequiz, and Hagamal, and Hafa, and Borax, and Rab, and Shorlu, in all 80,000 years. 25. Next stood Bachna Isij, chief of Yahalong, where the Gene Maker, Tarmuth, cleared the forests of the Aegean Halith, in making a roadway for Havilad's group of Shemasian corporeal stars, in which labor he employed 90,000 million Navanians for 4,000 years, and the distance of the road was more than 100,000 million miles. Bachna Isij was chief of Agwan, and Shu Nastus, and Hadar, and Ad, god of Vach, and of Kuja, and Rai, and Kathab, and Kunab, and Boot, and Abir, measurer of the mountains of the Aetherian worlds, Vijith, and Hakan, and Dis, measurer of the arches in the Aetherian world Niksh, constructor of the plains in the Navanian world Chom, in all 130,000 years. 26. Riam was next, chieftainess of Otaskaka, commonly called World of Shining Waters, a great visiting place in Nirvanya. She was goddess of Thesapalas and Tamax, wear of Saltshout Sea in the Offal Plains, in all 110,000 years. 27. Then stood Antosiv, goddess of Mun, renowned because she was of 260,000 years, and had declined exaltation above the rank of goddess. 28. Such, then, were the Rapon hosts. Chapter 2. 1. Far and wide, spread the words of Lika, words of Jehovah, over the plains of Poyar, first highest light in Etheria, where travelled the earth and her heavens. Far off, toward the northern group of twinkling stars, gazed the Etherian millions, rose the voice of millions, where is the red star? Where leath the earth and her troubled heavens? Is not this the young star, a satellite that travelleth with the hidden sun? What is the angle and course of this little, travelling world, that our eyes may feast on the road where soon our chief will send Jehovah's redeeming ships? 2. Then they pointed, surmising, by the red light color and tedious motion, which was the earth, one of the small gems that Jehovah had placed in the measureless firmament. And they gazed thereon, speaking with souls of delight, Great art thou, O Jehovah, to build so wide. To stud the Aetherian worlds with gems like these, to provide a place for the souls of men to germinate. Surely her people, the sons and daughters of the Red Star, must behold Etheria, must realize the difference betwixt a short corporeal life and this endless paradise. Can it be that they have, in their small heavens, unscrupulous false lords and false gods who set themselves up to be worshipped as creators, whom mortals name with bated breath? 
and have they, too, a host of saviors, who profess to have the key to all the roads that lead into this great expanse, the Aetherian worlds? Some excuse mortals have who are brought forth to life on the central suns, to be stubborn in their egotism of their lords and saviors and gods, but on one so small like the earth, how can it be? 3. Then came back Lika's swift messengers in their arrow ships, messengers attained to be very gods in wisdom, and in swiftness. And they quickly told the tale, about their visit to the Red Star and her heavens, told how the true God, son of Jehovah, had struggled on, but had been outmatched by all odds by self-gods and self-lords, who had plunged thousands of millions of hapless souls into torturing hells. 4. And this news leaker spread abroad in his Aetherian dominions, which only needed to be told once, for every sympathetic soul by his shocked appearance told it to others, the like of which spread instantly to thousands of millions of high-raised Aetherians. And when Lika said, 500 million angels shall go with me to the troubled earth and her heavens, in double quick time the volunteers were ready to be enrolled on the list. 5. Then Lika inquired more fully of the swift messengers, and they answered him, saying, This, O Lika, son of Jehovah. The earth hath passed her corporeal maturity, and mortals have set up a pyramid to mark the time thereof. The days of the highest, greatest audacity of the self-gods are past, and are memorized by the pyramid also, for in that self-same time, they taught mortals to worship the God and the Lord and the Saviour, instead of the Great Spirit, Jehovah. But darkness is upon the self-gods, and they are bound in hells, and mortals are also bound in hells. 6. Behold, this is the first dawn of Dan on the earth since she passed the limit of her greatest corporeality. Chapter 3. 1. Lika said to his chief marshal, Enroll thou my hosts, five hundred millions, and appoint unto them captains and generals, and grade them and apportion them. Beside these give me one million singers, one million trumpeters, one million attendants, one million heralds, one million messengers and one million recorders and waiters. 2. Lika called his chief builder and said unto him, Build me a fire ship, an air of Anya, with capacity for a thousand millions, and provide thou the ship with officers and workmen sufficient. Consult thou with my mathematicians as to the distance to the Red Star, and as to the densities through which the ship shall pass, and as to the power required, and the time of the journey, and provide thou all things sufficient therefore. 3. Then Lika spake to the High Council, saying, For the time of my absence my vice-chief, Haywu shall hold my place. Touching matters whereof ye desire my voice before I go, speak ye. 4. Atunzi said, Behold, O Lika, the star, Yatis, headeth towards the Aegean forests of Aktawa, and she hath not passed the Esperan age. Lika said, To clear the forest Aktawa I appoint Ishavi, goddess, with three thousand million labourers. Ishavi, how sayest thou? Ishavi said, Thanks to Jehovah and to thee, O Lika. I will at once choose my labourers and proceed to make the road. 5. Wantui said, Erst thy return, O Lika, the Hapsa Ogan Vortex will cross the south fields of Vedapuisa. She hath twenty thousand million souls in grades of sixty and seventy. Lika said, To her assistance for three years I appoint Tichi King, God, with fifty millions for his hosts. How sayest thou, Tichi King? Tichi King said, By the grace of Jehovah, I rejoice in this labor. In sufficient time will I prepare my hosts and accomplish what thou hast given into my keeping. 6. Watholoset said, In four years the hosts of Ewan will return from the double stars, Aleb and Wis, with their harvest of forty thousand million angels. How shall they be apportioned? Lika said, to Bonassa, six thousand millions, to Opal, two thousand millions, to Wedohine, five thousand millions, to Eosta, two thousand millions, to Fuban Rhodes, seven thousand millions, to Zekel, four thousand millions, to Huron, three thousand millions, to Pogar, six thousand millions, to Ulet, one thousand millions, and to Zulava, four thousand millions, and I appoint Misada, goddess, to provide the places in these several heavens for them, and to have charge of their selection and allotment. And I give to her five hundred million angels for her labouring hosts. How sayest thou, Misada? Misada said, It is Jehovah's gift, I am rejoiced. I will prepare myself and my hosts. 7. Ching Huan said, Behold the star world, Isadas, in her Semuan age will cross the roads of Vues in three years hence. Lika answered Ching Huan, saying, To cross these roads of light in her Semuan age would blight her power to bring forth animal life sufficient unto her wide continents. The trail must be filled with Semuan forests to preserve her gestative season. To this labor I appoint Iyilakak, god of Isadas Semuan forests in the roads of Vues, four thousand years. And I allot to Iyilakak six thousand million laborers. How sayest thou, Iyilakak? He answered, This is a great labor, by the wisdom and power of Jehovah, I will accomplish it. 8. Viaga Indras said, In two years the fleets of Leogastravans will return from their voyage of four thousand years, bringing two thousand million guests from the Inigihawas regions. Who shall provide for their reception? Lika said, Yenobstan, with ten million hosts. How sayest thou? Yenobstan said, A most welcome labor, O Lika. 9. His Joso said, The archers of Rasatissa, the Aetherian world of Yangzi's plains, will be to cast in four years. 
Lika said, to suttas 6 million archers, and to Ivg 4 million archers, and to each of them 100 million laborers. How say ye? Then spake suttas and Ivg, saying, by the help of Jehovah, the labor will be accomplished. 10. Satya said, the star world, Neto, will be to turn on her axis in two years hence, in which time she will pass through the south fields of Takaspi. Lika said, this will be a great labor, and I appoint Eurasis, with Salus, to accomplish it. And I give to them three years, with four thousand million laborers. How say ye? Then answered Eurasis and Salus saying, with fear and trembling we rejoice at this great work. By Jehovah's wisdom and power, we shall accomplish it. 11. After this man Alika made more than a thousand appointments to be accomplished there he returned from the earth and her heavens, but ordinary matters he left with his vice-chief, Hei Wu, and to the high council, the select ten millions. 12. Jehovah had said, Even as I provided a little labor unto mortals to develop the talents I created with all, so in like manner, and after the same like, but spiritually, provided I greater labor unto the high risen inhabitants in my Ethereum worlds. For which reason let my children learn the secret of harmonious and united labor with one another. I gave labor to man not as a hardship, but as a means of great rejoicing. 13. And the talents I gave on Corpa, I gave not to die on Corpa, but to continue on forever. As I gave talent for corporeal mathematics, and talent for corporeal buildings, even a talent for all things on corporeal worlds, even so provided I in my Ethereum worlds for the same talents, but spiritually. Wherein man on the corporeal earth, judging the adaptability of talent to corporeal things, may comprehend the nature of the labors I provided in my exalted heavens for the same talents. 14. Neither let any man fear that his talents may become too exalted for the work I have provided, for until he hath created a firmament, and created suns and stars to fill it, he hath not half fulfilled his destiny. Chapter 4. 1. Jehovah spake in the light of the throne of Kerksak, in Vedapuisa, saying, Lika, my son. This is my road and my journey. With thee and thy hosts my voice shall travel with power, on the earth will I lie my foundation, in spirit and word. Thy companion chiefs and chieftainesses shall go with thee, they shall help deliver the inhabitants of the earth and her heavens. 2. My enemies have marked their labors in temples and pyramids. Because their hearts rose not up to me, they descended into stone, the most dead of all things. They have carried the inhabitants of the earth down to rottenness and to death. Suffer their monuments to stand as testimonies of them that hated me, that denied me, that believed not in me, the all-person. 3. My building shall be the most subtle of all things, the spirit of mine own body. Verily shall it be a monument within the souls of my chosen. Nor will it go away again in darkness, but it shall encompass the whole earth. 4. For thou shalt find my chosen a scattered people, persecuted and enslaved, the most despised of all the races of men. But I will show my power with them, I will raise them up, the things I do through them, and the words I speak through them, even in their ignorance and darkness, shall become mighty. Their words shall be treasured forever, and none can match them in wisdom of speech, or in the craft of good works. 5. But the learned men of all other peoples shall be forgotten, their wisdom be like the wind that bloweth away. The self-gods and self-lords that led them astray shall be as a serpent that biteth itself unto death. Yea, as long as their pyramids and temples stand, their own falsehoods shall stare them in the face. 6. They have bound themselves in their own bulwarks, they shall yet be my laborers, thousands of years, to undo the evil they sowed on the earth. Nor shall they look down from heaven and behold with joy their temples and pyramids, but as one beholdeth a coal of fire burning in the flesh, so shall their edifices cry out unto them forever, thou false one. And it shall be to them a burning fire that will not die out. 7. And their great learning, even of the stars and the sun and moon, and of all the things of the earth, and in the waters, shall pass away and be remembered not amongst men. Yea, the names of their men of great learning shall go down, with none to remember them on the earth. And in time, long after, the nations of people will forget them and their wisdom, and even pity them, and say of them, What a foolish people! 8. But my chosen, who are their slaves, and are as nothing in the world, shall speak, and their words shall not be forgotten, shall write, and their books will be a new foundation in the world. Because my hand will be upon them, my wisdom shall come forth out of their mouths. 9. And this shall be testimony in the ages to come, as to what manner of knowledge endureth forever. For as the buildings of the earth remain on the earth, and the spirits of them that incline to the earth raise not up, so have I bound corpa in corpa, but as I planted the quickened spirit of man in man for spiritual knowledge, so shall spiritual knowledge look upward for an everlasting resurrection. 10. Lika asked, O thou highest, Jehovah, what are the preparations of thy gods? Wherein shall my hand be strong on the earth? Jehovah answered, saying, For six generations a back hath my God prepared unto thee and thy hosts. My voice was with my God, and I said unto him, My son, behold, the time cometh in six generations, when I will bring the earth into another dawn of light. And in that day will I bring my son, Lika, from my Ethereum worlds, and he shall come with a mighty host of Ethereans with great power. 
Go thou, my son, down to the earth, and with thy Louis, thy masters of generations, and raise up an heir unto thy voice. In the three great divisions of the earth provide thou three servants to do my will. 11. So, my son, God of Kraoshivi, hath raised up unto thee, O Lika, three men, Kapilya, and Chine, and Moses, the fruit of the sixth generation in the lands of their fathers, and they are of the faithists in me, holy men and wise. To these shalt thou send the gods of their forefathers, even they who were beaten away by the gods of evil. 12. And Kapilya shall deliver the faithists of Vindu, and Chine shall deliver the faithists of Japheth, and Moses shall deliver the faithists of Egypt. And this, also, shalt thou put upon Moses and his people, he shall lead his people westward, and their heirs after them shall also go westward, yea, westward until they circumscribe the earth. Three thousand and four hundred years shalt thou allot to them to complete the journey. And wherever they go, they shall establish my name, Jehovah, they shall lead all people away from all gods, to believe in the Great Spirit, who I am. 13. And when they have carried my name to the west coast of Guatama, and established me, behold, I will bring the earth into Cosmon, and my angels shall descend upon the earth in every quarter with great power. And it shall come to pass that the faithists of the children of Moses shall find the faithists of the children of Chine and the faithists of the children of Kapilya. 14. And all these people shall cry out in that day, No God, no Lord, no Saviour. For my hand will be upon them, and their words shall be my words. But they will proclaim me, the Great Spirit, the ever-present, Jehovah. 15. And they shall become the power of the world, and shall establish peace and put away war, leading all peoples in the way of peace, love and righteousness. Chapter 5. 1. Vedapuisa, in Lika's Aetherian regions, made glorious by Jehovah's light, and by his purified sons and daughters, whose heavenly mansions matched unto their great perfection, was now quickened with great joy. The trained hosts of Jehovah's son, Lika, knowing he was to take recreation by a journey to the Red Star, the earth, to deliver her unto holiness and love, provided music and heralds and trumpeters, millions of performers, to claim their reverence and rejoicing. 2. The fire ship, the Erevanya, now adorned in splendor, was brought into its place, and the vast hosts for the journey entered into it. A roadway was preserved for Lika and his companion chiefs and chieftainesses. First to lead, of the Rapon hosts, were the chieftainesses, Yanadai and Thazad, and they walked arm in arm. Next after them came Lika, alone. Next came Rebsad and Thoso, arm in arm. Next came Miente and Or Ad, arm in arm. Then Oshor and Yehoha, arm in arm. Then Guangu and Gihugan, and after them Riam and Antosiv. 3. Loud swelled the music as the chiefs marched forth, more than a thousand millions in concerted song to Jehovah, and echoed by the far-off trumpeters. And when the chiefs entered the ship, followed by the ship's laborers and firemen, all was motionless till the music ceased. 4. Lika walked upon the high arch, and stretching up his hands to Jehovah, said, I go forth in thy name and wisdom and love and power, O Jehovah. Thy great heavens which thou hast made full of glory shall bear me up, the spark thou gavest unto me will I keep quickened in thy sight. Thy hand is upon me. Thine arm encompasseth my ship of fire. In thee I know it will rise and course these worlds, to the red star, sail with thy hosts triumphantly unto labor for thy glory. 5. Arise, O palace of the firmament, by the power of Jehovah that dwelleth in me, upward. Onward. Arise. 6. And now with one will the hosts joined in, and the laborers and firemen stood to their places. A moment more, and the air of Anya raised from its foundation, steered toward the Red Star, and moved forth over the fields of Edipuisa. A hundred thousand banners and flags floated and waved from every side on the great ship of heaven, and was answered by more than ten hundred thousand more in the hands of the hosts below. 7. The Essenors of the ship struck up a quickened march, joined by the millions beneath, whilst the great multitudes tossed up their hands and shouted in prolonged applause. Thus went forth Lika, son of Jehovah, to the Red Star, the earth. Chapter 6. 1. As Lika in his ship sped on, coursing the fields of Sonazar, and Harta, and Uix, in the Aetherian world, Chena Goetha, rich in light in these regions, on the Yongwe road, and now traversed by hundreds of vessels coursing hither and yon, Jehovah's light descended on the high arch, in the midst of the Rapons, and the voice of Jehovah spake out of the light, saying, 2. As I taught Corporeans to build ships to traverse corporeal seas, so have I taught Aetherians to build vessels to course my Aetherian seas. 3. As I bound the corporean that he could not raise up in the air above corpor, save by a vessel, so created I my heavens for the spirits of men, that by manufactured vessels they might course my firmament. 4. For the little knowledge I gave to corporeans I made as a type of knowledge which is everlasting. 5. To the corporean I gave two kinds of presence, objective and subjective. By the latter he can imagine himself in a far-off place, and the thought that proceedeth out of him goeth to a friend and speaketh understandingly in the distance. For thus I created him. But he who goeth objectively must take his person with him, for so created I him. 6. 
and I magnified these two conditions unto the spirits of all men, that they might also appear objectively and subjectively in the places known to them. 7. And this is the bondage I created unto all places on the earth and in the heavens thereof, making all men understand the power of objective association. 8. I created wide seas on the corporeal earth, that man should perceive that one man alone could not cross over, nor in a small boat, with any profit under the sun. Neither created I my heavens in the firmament that one angel could go alone on long journeys, becoming isolated and powerless. But I provided them that they could not escape association, yea, I created the firmament that they must congregate together and go. 9. Nevertheless, I gave freedom unto all, to him that goeth not objectively, to go subjectively, but of little avail and not much truth or profit. And because I gave this liberty, behold, even Drew Hass will say, Yea, I have been there. Nor know they how to raise up from the earth, or to go to any place, save on another's shoulders. 10. And I created man and angels that all knowledge which is to be everlasting must be obtained objectively, yea, in the experience of his own person made I him to desire without end. 11. And they fill my seas in heaven and earth with their great ships, with wants that could not be satisfied in one place created I man. For I drive him forth on strange errands and on missions of profit and love, for I will store him with a knowledge of my works. Chapter 7. 1. Onward sped Lika in his Erevanya, with his eight hundred millions, through the sea of Aniawasa, the Aetherian realm of Haig Sauban, shining like a meteor in its flight, the ship of fire of eight hundred millions. On every side, the Jehovahian worshippers' vessels, tens of thousands, coursing as many ways, some fast, on missions of quickened labor, some slow, as traveling school ships, exploring the great expanse and glorious richness of Jehovah's provided worlds, always ready for the newborn, each and all the ships as studded gems in the Aetherian Sea, moving brilliance playing kaleidoscopic views, ever changing the boundless scene with surpassing wonders. And all of these, by signs and signals, the story of their place and mission revealing to the high-raised Aetherian souls, ships and men, as quickened living books of fire, radiant with the Father's light and history of worlds. 2. On Lika's ship, as on all the others, every soul, hundreds of millions, enraptured, stood in awe and admiration of the ever-changing scenes, some in silence, absorbed in thought, some posing with appraised hands, some ejaculating gleefully, and some in high reverence to Jehovah, uttering everlasting praise, every soul its full bent, being the full ripe fruit of the diversified talents as they first shone forth in corporeal life. 3. Onward sped Lika's Erevania now in the roads of Nopita, now in the Aegean forest of Kion, most rich in adamantine substances, arches, stalactites and stalagmites, and in forming and dissolving scenes, a forest, a very background in the Aetherian worlds for the over-brilliant crystal regions of light. And here, too, the tens of thousands of ships of Jehovah's chosen, and on either side the great roadway lay the fields of Anutive, inhabited by countless millions of Aetherian kingdoms. Along the road for hundreds of thousands of miles, stretched up the hands of millions and millions of souls, waving banners and flags to their favoured ships, going to some native star, from which Jehovah brought them forth. 4. Then changed the course of Lika's Erevanya, by his commands sent through the comet Yo to Gactra, a new condensing world, already with a head of fire 4,000 miles broad, a very ball of melted corpor, whirling like the spindle of a filling spool, forever winding unto itself the wide-extending nebulae. Here were coursing along, hundreds of thousands of school ships, with students and visitors to view the scenes, most grand in rolling on, now round, now broken, now outstretched, this ball of liquid fire, whirling in the vortex, thirty million miles long. To balance against which vortex many of the ships tossed and rolled, dangerously, had they not been in skilled hands, and, as they were, causing millions of the students on many a ship to fear and tremble, perceiving how helpless and stupid they were compared to the very gods who had them in charge. 5. Not long did Lika loiter to view the scenes, or to indulge his eight hundred millions, but stood his course again for the Red Star, the Earth, coursing the Fuaset Mountains, where the god, Vrila Gabon, built the Ecosini Kingdom, whose capital was Exostra, the place where the Nuan gods assembled to witness the first starting forth of the Earth. Here, halting a while, and a down went Lika's recorders, to gather from the Exostra libraries the Earth's early history and the grade of her creation, a copy of which obtained, the recorders hastily returned, when onward again sped the Erevanya, now making course across the plains of Zed, in the midst of which lay the great sea Obloachizi, four million miles across, and this also studded over with thousands of Aetherian ships. 6. And now across to Rikas, the place of the goddess, Enonvactus, with her seven thousand million Aetherian souls, whereupon Lika and his hosts cast down millions of wreaths and tokens, and the while, the music of the two spheres mingled together in Jehovah's praise. Here, across, the distance was three million miles. 7. Now, all the while before, the red star stood upward, inclining upward, but here in horizontal line began to stand, gleaming in more effulgent flame. And in the course, where Lika's Erevania should go, the goddess, Enonvactus, had previously appraised a hundred thousand pillars of fire to honor him and his company, which great respect Lika and his hosts answered with holy salutations. 
8. After this, came the Ji'an forests of Hogabed, three million miles across, and close for lack of Aetherian air and inspiration. Here stood the province of Arathaktian, where dwelt the god, Yu Sin, with 30,000 million newly raised brides and bridegrooms from the star Kagados. Over these regions Lika sped swiftly, and then to the open sea, Amadapan, on the Vashuan roads. 9. Then a sail of two million miles, in the uninhabited regions of Sama, when he reached Chinvat, the bridge on the boundary of the Earth's vortex beyond the orbit of the Moon. 10. And, halting not, but now coursing on a downward plane, made straight toward the swift rolling Earth, whose speed was three quarters of a million miles a day. Through the high floating plateau of atmosphere came Lika with his fire ship, with his hosts, 800 millions, came his ship like a meteor, huge as a continent. Chapter 8. One, on the uninhabited plateau, Theovrakistan, rich and broad as the earth, high above the lands of Japheth, and Vindu, and Arabanya, lighted Lika in his air of Anya, with his eight hundred millions. Here he made fast his fire ship, and forth came his hosts to found a heavenly kingdom. Lika said. 2. I hear thy voice, O Jehovah, thy hand is upon me, in thy wisdom and power will I build the foundations of thy kingdom in these heavens. 3. Jehovah said, Call forth thy Rapon hosts, thy companion chiefs, build thy throne broad for them and thee. And shape thou the area of the capital and stand thy high council, the chosen millions, to the four quarters of the heavens of the earth. 4. The legions then fell to and built a heavenly place unto Jehovah, and called it Yogana Kaktra, home of Lika and his eight hundred millions. 5. Jehovah called out of the light of the throne which Lika built, saying, Lika, my son, thou shalt build all things new on the earth and in the heavens of the earth, even as if nothing had ever been. Send thou thy messengers in an Otevan to the broken down region of my beloved, God of Krayoshivi, and bring him and his thousand attendants unto thy place. 6. Thereupon an Otevan was sent off, well officered, and in due time it returned, bringing God to Yogana Kaktra, where he was received with great joy, and greeted in Jehovah's name. 7. Lika said, Speak thou, O God, for I am come to deliver these heavens into Jehovah's dominion. What are the light and the darkness of the heavens and the earth that have been entrusted to thy keeping, in Jehovah's name? 8. God said, Alas, how can I speak? Behold, my kingdoms are scattered and gone, I have nowhere any pride in anything I have done in heaven and earth. An exceeding great darkness came upon my people, for a thousand and five hundred years. Thy servants have been overpowered, helpless and tossed as chaff before the wind. 9. Lika said, How many gods? How many dans of darkness? Whither are gone my true gods? 10. God said, Four gods are risen to Etheria with their hosts, heartbroken, true gods. Four dans have come and gone, so weak and small, like a breath of air, for the darkness brushed them away. In Savakharban, in Etheria, sojourn thy gods. 11. Jehovah's light fell upon the throne, and his voice came out of the light, saying, Send thou, O my son, Lika, to Savakharban, four arrow ships, with a hundred thousand attendants for my true gods, and bring them to Yogana Kaktra. 12. Lika then sent four arrow ships with his swift messengers and a hundred thousand attendants, to bring back the four disconcerted gods. 13. God said, Thousands of millions of angels of darkness flood the Haddon regions, and as many grovel about on the low earth. Deus, the false lord God, is cast into hell, a hell so wide that none can approach his place of torment. Tain, the false god, the Joss, is also cast into hell, and so is Sudga, the false Dias, and so are all the false gods that encompass the earth around, their kingdoms are in anarchy. 14. The names Lord, and God, and Dias, and Deus, and Zeus, and Joss, and Hojos, and many others, have become worshipful on the earth. Not only labor the traders to put away the great spirit, but to establish themselves as men gods capable of creating, yea, the veritable creator of heaven and earth. 15. Lika said, Hear thou, then, the voice of Jehovah. Because they have put me aside and assumed to be creators under the name God, and Deus, I will magnify the person of God and Deus in men's understanding. 16. Nor from this time forth on the earth, for three thousand years, shall man be confined to the one name, Jehovah, or Elan, or Eloi, but worship God, or Lord, or Deus, or Zeus, or Dias, or Jos, or Hojos. For since these men have cast themselves into hells, behold, the spirits of the risen shall not find them nor their kingdoms. And thou shalt magnify unto mortals that all names worshipful belong to the ever-present, whose person is the spirit and substance of all things. And if they inquire of thee, Who is Dias, or, Who is God, or, Who is Jos, thou shalt say, Hath he not said, Behold, I am the creator of heaven and earth. And I say unto you, He is the ever-present, the all-highest ideal. 17. But this bondage shall come upon them, to reap the harvest they have sown. Because one hath said, Build thou a pyramid, and thy God will come and abide therein, even as a man dwelleth in a house, he shall be bound while the pyramid standeth. And another hath said, Behold, thy God is in the image of a man, and he sitteth on a throne in heaven, he shall be bound while this belief surviveth on the earth. 18. Because they have sown a falsehood on the earth, the harvest is theirs. 
and until they have reaped their whole harvest they shall not rise into my Ethereum worlds. Chapter 9. 1. When the other four gods, the true sons of Jehovah, who had been discomfited in the lower heavens by Deus and his fellow false gods, came, the light of Jehovah came again on Leka's throne. Jehovah said. 2. I suffer not evil to triumph over good but for short seasons, and, soon or late, my righteous sons and daughters, raise up and rejoice in their trials which I suffered to come upon them. Let not men or angels say, because this or that happeneth, lo, Jehovah sleepeth at his post. Or, lo, Jehovah is the author of evil, or is impotent to avert it. 3. My times are not as the times of men or angels, nor am I within the judgment of men as to what is evil or good. When the wealth of the rich man is stolen, do not mortals say, Poor man, Jehovah hath afflicted him. For they judge me by what they consider afflictions. But they behold not that I look to the soul of man as to what is good for him. And when the assassin hath struck the king unto death, behold, they say, How hath a good creator done this? For they consider not the nation nor the problem of anything but for the day thereof, nor consider they what I do for the souls of many nations, by one small act. 4. For all people in heaven and earth are mine own, they are as trees in my orchard, and I prune them not for the life of the branches, but for benefit of the whole orchard, and for the harvest that cometh after. 5. I created life, and I take away life, in mine own way do I with mine own. I send night to follow the day, clouds to interchange with the sunshine. And even so do I give times of dan to my atmosphere and heavens, to be followed by seasons of darkness. 6. By these changes do mortals and angels and gods learn to battle with and overcome the elements of my worlds. 7. The true God said, We weep before thee, O Jehovah. Long and hard we labored our allotted seasons, we were helpless witnesses to the great darkness that came upon the inhabitants of heaven and earth. 8. Leka said, To you five, true gods, who have toiled in the darkness of the earth and her heavens, I restore your old time names for the season of dawn, after which I will raise you all up, with your kingdoms restored to the full, and ye shall be heirs in my Nirvanian heavens, in peace and rest. Chapter 10. 1. The five gods' names were Ain, Jek, Lay, Ol and Yith. Leka said unto them, Ye have been heretofore crowned as gods, come ye to the foot of Jehovah's throne, for I will crown you with new names. 2. When they came to the place designated, Leka continued, Take my crown upon thy head, and speak thou in Jehovah's name in that labor which I put upon thee, Jehovah in Ain, Jehovah in Jek, Jehovah in Lay, Jehovah in Ol, Jehovah in Yith. 3. And thereupon Leka crowned them with a band on the head, inscribed, Anain, Injek, in Lay, Inoal, and Inyith, panic names designating their rank and the age of the earth in which these things came to pass. 4. Leka said, To each and every one I give of my Ethereum hosts ten million laborers for the period of dawn. And these are the labors I allot unto you, to Anain, to go down to the earth, to the land of Vindu, and be inspirer unto my mortal son, Kapilia, and his followers. To Inlay, to go down to the earth, to the land of Japheth, and be inspirer unto my son, Chine, and his followers. To Inol, to go down to the earth to the land of Egypt, and be inspirer to my son, Moses, and his followers. And ye three shall restore the faithists in these great divisions of the earth unto liberty and safety. And thou, Inol, shalt deliver Moses and the faithists out of Egypt, and shape their course westward, for they shall circumscribe the earth, and complete it by the time of Cosmon. 5. To inject, to go down to the earth, to Parsi and Helest, and provide those peoples to liberate the slaves who are faithists, whom thou shalt inspire to migrate to Moses and his people. To inlay, to go down to the earth, to Japheth and Vindu and Arabanya, to inspire the scattered faithists in those lands to come together, to the great lights, Kapilia and China and Moses. 6. And ye shall take with you of my hosts, whom I brought from Etheria, and labor ye together as one man. And when dawn hath ended, ye shall repair hither, and be raised up unto my Nirvanian kingdoms. Nevertheless, ye shall not leave Jehovah's chosen alone, but provide angel successes unto them. And herein I give you a new law unto all my angel hosts who shall hereafter dwell with the faithists on the earth, which is, that successes shall always be provided by the retiring hosts ere they have departed, for the faithists shall not more be left alone for a long season. 7. The chosen five then said, In thy name and wisdom and power, O Jehovah, we go forth in joy to fulfill thy commandments. Because we lost the earth thou hast given it into our hands to redeem it and glorify thee. 8. And thereupon Leka proclaimed a day of recreation, so the hosts could be selected, the fifty millions, to which labor the marshals fell to, helping the chosen. 9. During the recreation, the Atmospherians explained to the Aetherians how laid the lands of the earth and the heavens thereunto belonging. And then, after a season of prayer and singing, and a season of dancing, the recreation was brought to a close. 10. After labor was resumed, the chosen five, with their hosts, saluted before the throne of Jehovah, and then withdrew and went to vessels which had been previously prepared for them, and embarked, and departed for the earth. Chapter 11. 1. 
Jehovah spake to Leka, saying, Appoint thou other servants unto me for the other great divisions of the earth, and for the islands in the oceans of the earth, and give unto them each ten millions of my servants which thou broughtest from Nirvanya. And they shall go down amongst mortals, and by inspiration and otherwise collect together in groups the scattered faithists who worship me. And thy servants shall also provide successors to come after them, to abide with mortals, making the seasons of watch short unto them that they shall not be weary thereof. 2. Then Lika appointed Tichau, Inyak, Gichi, Guelph, Ali and Siwa, and allotted them to different divisions of the earth, and he gave them each ten millions of the hosts brought from the Orion worlds. And these were selected after the same manner as the previous ones, and they also saluted and departed for the earth. 3. Again Jehovah spake in the light of the throne, saying, Because many are risen in wisdom and truth, I will have Theovrakistan for my holy place unto them, and it shall be the region for my brides and bridegrooms at the resurrection of dawn. But at the end thereof it shall be divided and subdivided that none may find the place of my standing. For it hath come to pass, that man on the earth learning the name of one of my heavens glorifieth it, and aspireth to rise to it, but to rise to no other heaven. 4. Because my true gods taught man of horde in the early days, man desired horde. Whereupon mine enemies, the false gods, each one cried out, Behold, my heavenly place is Horde. I am the all-heavenly ruler. Come hither to me. For, by this means, the name I gave in truth, was usurped and made as a snare to enslave my earth-born. 5. And I will not more give to mortals a name of any of my heavenly places, nor shall they be taught of any heavens save the higher and the lower heavens, which shall designate my Aetherian and my Atmosphere heavens. And by these terms shall man on the earth be fortified against the stratagems of false heavenly rulers. 6. And man shall perceive that when angels or men or gods or saviors say, Come ye unto me, and I will give you of my heavenly kingdom. That they are false, and but tyrants to enslave my people. But if they say, Go ye, serve the great spirit, and not me, for I am only a man as thou art. Then shall it be known that they are of my Nirvanian hosts. 7. And if they say, Come ye to this heaven or that heaven, for with me only is delight, it shall be testimony against them. But if they say, Verily, Jehovah is with thee, cultivate thyself within him, and thou shalt find delight in all worlds, then shall it be testimony they are from my emancipated heavens. 8. Leka said, Seventy new kingdoms shall ye found in the lowest heaven, where ye shall begin again with schools and colleges and factories, teaching the spirits of the dead the requirements for resurrection. 9. Two hundred millions of my Orion angels shall be allotted to these seventy heavenly places, and during dawn it shall be their work to carry out these commandments. And they shall provide for successors after them, who shall continue for another season, and they shall provide yet other successors, and so on, even till the coming of the Cosmon era. 10. Lika then selected the 200 million angels, and divided them into 70 groups and companies around about the earth, in the lowest heaven, and after they were duly officered and organized, they saluted before the throne of Jehovah and departed to their several places. 11. Then came the voice of Jehovah to Lika, saying, Behold, of thy 500 millions, are still left 170 and 5 millions. This, then, is the work thou shalt put upon them, they shall begin at one end of Harda and go to the other, delivering all the hells of the false gods as they go, untying the knots thereof and providing passage for the Druhas into one great plateau. For as the false gods began in confederacy I will bring them back into confederacy, even all of them that are cast into hell. And thou shalt officer them safely, and when they are thus established, behold, thou and thy Rapon hosts shall go and raise them up and deliver them into the Aegean forest of Terpset, where they shall be habitated and begin a new life of righteousness and love. 12. And Anuazaj, once crowned Lord God, shall be over them, and Osiris and Sudgar and Tayin and all the other confederated gods shall be under him, for even as these gods laboured to cast me out, behold, I give unto them their harvest. 13. Then Leka commissioned the 175 million Aetherians, and officered them, and sent them into the Haddon regions of the earth to deliver the hells thereof. 14. Jehovah said to Leka, The rest of thy 800 millions shall remain in Theovrakistan, for the labour here is sufficient for them. And so they remained. Chapter 12. 1. The Rapon hosts desired to see Ahura, and so Lika sent an arrow ship, with 100,000 angels, properly officered, to Vara Pishanaha, to Ahura, praying him to come on a visit for ten days, bringing his 10,000 attendants with him. 2. And it thus came to pass that Ahura came to Theovrakistan, where he was most honorably received and saluted under the sign morning of Jehovah's Light, and he in turn answered in the sign My words shall serve his sons and daughters. 3. Accordingly, Lika came down from the throne and greeted Ahura, saying to him, Come now, then, and stand in the midst of the throne, that thy voice may delight the holy council. 4. So Ahura ascended the throne, along with Lika, and when the latter sat down, then Ahura walked to the midst and saluted the holy council with the sign fire and water, and he spake, saying, 5. Because thou, O Jehovah, hast called me in the sign of the morning of thy light, behold, I am risen up before thee, to speak to thy sons and daughters. 6. 
But how shall I clear myself, O Father? I am as one who had a hidden skeleton, and the place of concealment broken down. Because I was by thee created alive in the world, why should I not have forever glorified thee? This have I asked myself all the days of my life, but thou troublest not to answer me in my curiosity. 7. When I was young in life, lo, I cried out unto thee, complaining because thou maddest me not wise. I said, Behold, thou created street all the animals on the face of the earth to know more than I in the day of birth. Yea, I knew not where to find suck, nor could I raise up on my feet, but laid as I was laid down by my nurse. 8. Even to the lambs and the calves and the young colts, thou gavest greater wisdom and strength than thou gavest thy servant. I said, Why, then, shall I glorify thee or sing songs in thy praise? Why shall I pray unto thee, Thy ways are unalterable and thy voice answereth me not? 9. Thou art void as the wind, thou art neither person, nor wisdom, nor ignorance. And as for thy servants, who say they hear thy voice, behold, they are mad. I said, How can a man hear thee? It is the reflection of himself he heareth. How can a man see thee? It is the reflection of himself he seeth. 10. And thou suffered street me to become strong, as to strength, and wise as to self, even as I had called unto thee in my vanity. Yea, I prided myself in myself, and as to thee, I sought to disprove thee on all hands. And the worthlessness of prayer unto thee I showed up as a great vanity. Yea, I craved wisdom for sake of showing thou wert neither wise nor good. And to this end thou also gavest unto me. And I became conceited in hiding my conceit, even from mine own understanding, that I might carry all points. 11. I pointed to the fool, saying, Behold, Jehovah's son. I pointed to the desert place, saying, Behold, Jehovah's fruitful earth. To the mountain which is rocks and barren, saying, Behold, how Jehovah hath finished his work. And of the evil man, who murdereth his brother, I said, Jehovah, good in one thing, good in all. 12. But I knew not the hand that was upon me, thou wert answering my prayer every day. Yea, I ventured to judge thee with my eyes, and my ears, and my own understanding. In the place I stood I judged thee and thy works, O Jehovah. And the craft of my speech won applause, by flattery was I puffed up. And I deemed my judgment the right one, and whoso saw not as I saw, I condemned or pitied, yea, I craved great speech that I might show him up in their folly. 13. And in this thou also answeredst me by giving freely, and my words were reckoned great words and wise. And I was quoted and praised far and near. Yea, and I practiced good works that I might show unto others that, even in such like, a belief in thee was vanity and a waste of judgment. 14. Yea, I craved means and great treasures that I might render good unto others, in order that mine own philosophy might seem the highest of the high. And even in this thou rendered street unto me great treasures and ample means, and by my good works done unto others I was applauded as a great and good God above all others. 15. I craved a heavenly kingdom that I might prove my great wisdom and power unto thousands of millions, for I pity them that I thought foolishly dwelt in darkness in regard to thee. And even yet thou, O Jehovah, didst not cut me off, but gavest me a great kingdom of seven thousand millions. 16. And I taught them my philosophy, that there was nothing above them, that thou, O Jehovah, essayest not, heardst not, answeredst not. Yea, I made my will all-powerful that I might cut them off from thee. But alas for me. 17. I had been as the sylph of old who stole into the musical instruments and put them out of tune. My kingdom was divided into seven thousand million philosophers, every one mad in his own conceit, and in a different way. There was no harmony amongst them. Yea, they were a kingdom of growlers and curses. I had carried away the tuning fork, for I had cast thee out, O Jehovah. Mine own philosophy had done it all. 18. Because I set myself up as the All-Highest, thou didst indulge me, and I became the highest god of my people. Yea, they cast their plaudits on me at first, but afterward all their ills and their curses. Neither could I satisfy them in anything in heaven or earth, nor could I turn them off from me, for I had bound them unto me by my great promises. 19. I became as one in a cloud, because of the great trouble upon me and the fear withal. And yet thou, O Jehovah, didst not forget me, but sent thy God's words unto me, imploring me what to do, that I might be delivered in season. But how could I hear thee, O Jehovah, or hearken unto thy gods? Behold, my pride had swallowed me up, I was encompassed on every side. Because I had denied thee before I must deny thee still. 20. Then greater darkness came upon me, thy light was obstructed by the walls I had built up against thee. Then came the crash, as if heaven and earth were rent asunder. I was cast into the chasm, my kingdom was upon me. The leadership and vanity I had sown had cast me into hell. I was in death, but could not die. 21. A knot was bound upon me, foul-smelling slaves were clinched upon me, millions of them, tens of millions, and the shafts of their curses pierced my soul, I was as one lacerated and bound in salt, choked and suffocated with foul gases. But yet thou, O Jehovah, didst not desert me, but did hold my judgment from flying away into chaos. 22. 
and thy voice came to me in the time of my tortures, came as the argument of the Most High. It was like myself that spake to myself, saying, He that forever casteth away all things, can never be bound in hell, he that craveth and holdeth fast, is already laying the foundation for torments. 23. And I cried out unto thee, O Jehovah, saying, O that I had possessed nothing, nor talents, nor craft, nor philosophy, that I had told these wretches to go to thee, O Jehovah. O that I had told them, thou alone couldst bless them, or supply them. But I sought to lead them, and lo, they are upon me. 24. O that I could be freed from them, that I could turn about in an opposite way from my former years, having nothing, craving nothing, but a right to serve thee, O my Father. 25. Thou didst send thy gods into the depths of hell, and they delivered me. And I made oath unto thee, O Jehovah, to serve thee forever. And thou gavest me labor, and I bowed myself down to labor for thy druhas, with all my wisdom and strength forever. And thy hand came upon me and gave me great power, power even over mine own soul to create happy thoughts. 26. Why should I not praise thee, O my Father? Thou gavest me liberty in all my ways, and didst answer me according to my desires. Neither once hast thou turned away from me nor afflicted me, but because of mine own vanity I cut myself off from thee. Yea, thou hast shown me that to glorify thee is the foundation of the highest happiness, to sing to thee is the greatest delight, to praise thee is the highest wisdom. 27. Here at Ahura halted in his speech a while, and, still standing in the midst of the throne, burst into tears. Presently he said. 28. Anuazaj was my good friend. He it was who since took the name Deus, and, afterward, proclaimed himself the Creator. I weep in pity for him. He is in hell now. 29. He was my best friend in the time of my darkness. And after I was delivered out of hell, he came and labored with me, full of repentance and love. Oft we rested in each other's arms. Afterward, he traveled far and near in thy great heavens, O Jehovah. 30. And when he returned to this earth's heavens he came not to see me. And I was broken-hearted because of my great love for him. Then he founded his heavenly place and called it Horde. And I called out to thee, O Jehovah, as to what message I should send him, for I foresaw his kingdom would be broken up and himself ultimately cast into hell. 31. And thou gavest me liberty to send him a message in mine own way. And in the anguish of my broken heart I sent him a message, saying, In substance, I have no longer any love for thee. And I chid him and upbraided him because he came not to see me, to gratify my burning love. And I foretold him the great darkness and the hell that would come upon him, even as they now are. 32. Now do I repent, O Jehovah, that I sent him such a message. For near two thousand years my message hath been to me as if I swallowed a living coal of fire. 33. Ahura ceased. Lika spake, saying, Because thou hast plead for Deus, thou hast turned the Aetherian hosts to him. To thee I allot the restoration of Deus, alias Anwazaj. My hosts will in the proper time take thee to the hell where he is bound, and thou shalt be the first to receive him. 34. Lika then proclaimed a day of recreation, for there were millions of Aetherians who desired to meet Ahura and greet him with love and praise. Chapter 13. 1. Lika spake before the Rapon hosts, saying, Behold, the hosts of laborers are allotted to their places. 2. Let us go about, and examine the earth and her heavens. It is proper that my surveyors measure her land and water, together with all the living thereon and therein, and especially as to every man and woman and child, and the time of maturity unto them, and the years of the generations of men. 3. And man that is brought forth out of the earth shall be numbered, and the grade of his understanding measured, and the nature of his desires and aspirations shall be ascertained, which reports shall be copied and sent into the Orion kingdoms, for the deliberations of the chiefs, that they may determine as to the requirements of the earth, and as to the nature in which her roadway shall be strewn with either light or darkness for the ultimate perfection of her soul harvests. 4. And the heavens of the earth shall be measured, as to the spirits of the dead, and their grades shall be made out, together with their desires and aspirations, the lengths of the times of their bondage to the earth, and the places of their habitation, and the nature of their supplies. And a copy of such record shall be made and also sent to the Orient chiefs for their deliberations. 5. And the plateau of the earth's heavens shall also be numbered and measured, and their localities mapped out and recorded, and copies thereof also sent to the Orient chiefs, that they may determine as to necessary changes therein and thereof. Hey, this is a quick tip to show you how you can add an audio file to an MP3.